for the second workshop, we again begin by opening a new R file, which was done by hitting Control Shift N or going to File, New File, R Script. So I'm going to go ahead and save that right now by hitting Control S if I'm on a Windows. I'm going to call this Workshop 2.R and we're ready to begin. So in the first workshop, we talked about um, saving a variable, which was, for example, uh, we did x is assigned 42. So today we're going to talk about um, how to assign more than one value in the same thing. So that's called, so when we have uh, more than one thing saved in the same variable, that's called a vector in R. Um, and the way that we do that is with uh, the C function, which means concatenate. So let's say I wanted to, I wanted x to have the value um, 4, 5, 6, 7, um, and if I go ahead and Oops, I forgot the C. So if I go ahead and run that by hitting Control Enter, and then I take a look at X, I can see that it's um, got four values in it now. So that is your first vector in R. Um, we can also create vectors by combining multiple variable variables. Sorry. So let's say we had a few different variables. and we wanted to combine them all into one. Then we could say x is assigned the concatenation of y, z, and v. And then we could see what that looks like. So if I run these two lines, oops, oh, sorry, I forgot, I forgot to run the lines above it, so it doesn't know what I'm talking about. So now if we run that, we see that x is now a vector that has these three elements in it. Um, we can also reassign a vector to have a new value. So let's say uh, if we had this up here, uh, we had x is 4, 5, 6, 7, but we actually forgot a number and we want, um, we actually want x to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So rather than retyping the entire thing, we can just reassign it. So I can assign x to be the concatenation of what x currently is with the number 8. So if I run that, and then I take a look at what x looks like, I can see that it's now five elements long, and that it just took what x previously was and combined it with the number eight. Um, something really important to note about storing vectors is that they can only contain one class. So let's see what happens if I try to make a vector that contains more than one class. So if I did, 5, which is, well, let's do 5.5, .5, which is numeric, and hello, which is a character. And then let's take a look at the class of x. So first off, do you think this will work at all? And if, if you think it'll work, why? So it, it did work. But now if we take a look at the class of x, we see that it was turned into a character. So what actually happened here is that R can interpret the number 5.5 .5 as a character, but R can't interpret the word hello as a number. So it's kind of like the argument of a, uh, a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle isn't always a square. So if you do try to put um, like more than one kind of class inside a vector in R, it's going to convert some of those into something else. So um, for example, let's say I wanted to uh, take the first element of x and add it to the number 6. So basically what I'm saying right here is 5.5 .5 plus 6. If I try to run that, I'm going to have an error because now the first element of x is actually being interpreted as a character. So I'm saying to them, or I'm saying to R, uh, take a character and add it to a number. And now it's got no idea what you're talking about. So that's really important to keep in mind. You can only have one type of class in a vector, and if you try to put more than one class, it's going to convert them. Um, the next thing we talked about was the colon operator. So if I wanted to um, create a variable that, um, let's say, has the numbers 1 to 100 and 200 to 300. So I could start with uh, the concatenate function again, and I can do 1 to 100 and 200 to, sorry, 200 to 300. 
Um, so what the colon operator does is it creates a sequence of numbers from the first number to the second number in increments of exactly one. So if I do that, and then I take a look at the first few elements of H, um, I can see that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and if I take a look at the last few elements of H, it's the numbers up to 300. Um, the next thing that we looked at was the sum and mean functions. So this is exactly what you would expect. It just calculates the sum of the vector that you put inside of it, and the mean function computes the mean. So if I run those, I can see the sum and mean of um, our vector h. So another really useful function is the length function. So that tells you the number of elements that are inside of a vector. So if I run that, I can see that there are um, 201 elements uh, inside the vector h here. Um, so another important thing to note is the way that um, math works in R when you have two vectors. So let's say I have x is assigned um, 1 to 10 and y is assigned 2 to 6 and then I try to add x plus y. Um, so this is definitely not what we would expect from just looking at x and y. Um, so when, when we say x plus y, what's actually happening is R is taking the first element of x and adding it to the first element of y and storing that in the first element of x plus y. And then it does that for the second element, third element, and so on. However, if we take a look at the length of x compared to the length of y, uh, we can see that they're not the same. So rather than R throwing up on you and, and telling you that what you're doing makes absolutely no sense, um, it actually compensates for this by recycling numbers in the vector. So if one vector is shorter than the other, which y is shorter than x in our case, it's actually recycling these values um, once, uh, once there's nothing left. So for the first, we see that the length of y is five, so for the first five values, um, everything looks you know, as we would expect, but then, um, so this is the sixth value, so for the sixth value of x is six, and the sixth value of y doesn't actually exist, so it goes back and loops around and takes the first value of y, which was two, and then it says two plus six equals eight. Then it takes the second value of y and adds it to the seventh value of x. And the last thing that we talked about was vector subsetting. So we've already seen a bit about that um, in this video already. So if we want to see a specific element inside of a vector, um, all you have to do is use these uh, square brackets. So if I wanted to see the second uh, value that's stored inside the vector x, it's 2. Um, if I wanted to see the third value stored inside y, it's 4. Um, but let's say I only wanted part of a vector, I, but I wanted more than just one element. Then I could do x um, elements 5 to 8, and I see these are the elements in x 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, so the next thing that we can do is subset on negative values of x. So if we do that, we're telling R to exclude whatever value we put inside, uh, whatever value we put after the negative sign. So if I hit enter on this, it's going to give us a vector which has every element that x started with except for the second element. So we can see that the second element has actually been removed. Um, but one important thing to note is that doing this any of the subsetting doesn't actually change the value of x itself. So if we look at x, it's still the same. Um, the only way that it would actually be changed is if every single time we were reassigning x to be these values. So just to recap, for workshop two, we talked about vectors, the concatenate function, uh, reassigning vectors, the way that uh, R does math on vectors, the sum, mean, and length functions, 
and vector subsetting.